Hey guys, this is Jeremy from 70 Productions. I want to talk to you guys about the fine line of creating great content. So if you guys blog at all, if you're using social media, if you are pastors and preaching a message, if you're offering services and trying to market your ideas, or your products, there's a lot of ways that you are actually creating content for your organization, your business, your ministry, whatever it is. And so in this idea of creating content, it's interesting how people approach it because they have all different methods, whether it's creating the right atmosphere by completely leaving everything behind, getting secluded, or if they need to be in direct dialogue with different people to come up with ideas, if they need to be reading other people's blogs, whatever the opportunity is, there's always a unique way about creating great content for the, the delivery of what it is. I specifically want to talk about blogging and social media, because in that approach to blogging and social media, there is a unique way of being able to go about it. And so if you're a pastor, if you create sermons for your ministry, it's not the same way to be able to write a great message for your sermon and to be able to have a blog article, to have a tweet, to be able to have something that goes onto social media, whether it's YouTube in video formats or whether it's text. And so the idea to be able to come up with something great actually needs to have a purpose. And so whether you're using social media or blogging, you need to have a strategy set up, you need to have goals, you need to have a well-defined purpose, and you need to have an implementation that actually has people on board to be able to create something out of what you're already producing. And so if you are using social media, I would highly encourage you to actually have for every specific network a social media strategy that displays the purpose of what it is that you're wanting to do with the network, as well as how you're gonna be able to create that content. And as for blogging, it's a little bit of a different approach in the sense that it's a much longer form version of what you're actually doing. Something like what I'm doing right now is going to become a blog article. But it's very intentional in the fact that we want to equip people within the church technology role to be able to create great content. And so my view of all of this is that church tech people don't actually create the content. They're there to support, to enable, to encourage, equip people to be able to do the best job that they can. So if you're running the social media account, you're not actually coming up with the actual tweets that come out of it, but you might format it, you might structure it differently. At the same time, if you're writing blog articles, you might not necessarily be the person that actually comes up with the content, but you're in charge of the SEO as far as the search engine, the, the keywords, the title, all that stuff, as well as maybe trying to grab images from the photographer or the video to be able to link to a podcast or something like that. So when you, whenever you're creating content, know that there is a fine line between not enough as well as not, not too much. And so whenever you're coming up with the different tweets, the different Facebook status updates, know that you need to have this fine balance between putting enough time and energy, and in, in all regards, I would say Facebook it should be five to 10 minutes of actual effort towards every single post. Um, Twitter may be a little bit easier in the sense that you're just drawing some information out of an article, a blog, or a sermon. Um, but at the same time, for a blog post, I would put at least an hour effort into every single blog post that you post. And that's on average. Some might take dramatically longer, some might take dramatically less. But that includes the person that's writing the content, um, editing, the, editing it down to a blog form, and sometimes that means making the short the sentences shorter, the entire blog article shorter, coming up with a series, creating the graphic for it as well. There's a whole bunch of investment in this. But I would highly encourage you guys to know what it is the form factor of your content that you're creating. Here at 70 Productions, we're actually pushing for more research content in our actual blog post so that we can become an authority on what it means to be church tech. And so you would occasionally see a 300 word post and that's great. I appreciate that, but we actually want to become experts and authorities as we speak into this. So when we create an infographic, where are we getting this data and research from? Um, whenever we're talking about something like this video, that we're actually talking about creating content strategies in the article in the text below, we'll actually have links to other articles where we're actually jumping on for more information on this content. So put the effort in, put the research in, don't go overboard in the sense that you're actually spending five or six hours on content for just a single blog post. 
but make it so concise and so effective that you're actually making a quality post that's adding to the ministry, adding to the discussion, and actually coming out with something better that you actually say it's worthy to be able to put out there for people. So I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. How do you make sure that you walk that fine line of creating great content where you're not investing too little into the content, but you're not going overboard as well? What are some practices that you have, maybe some resources that you'd like to share? Leave your comments below and we'll talk to you guys next week.